Well, it's been yet another hard week for fans of Offaly Hurling. And I'm joined here in studio by Liam Hogan, who is, of course, the former chair of the Offaly Hurling Review and Implementation Group. Liam, thank you very much for coming in this evening to chat to us. Um, I'm afraid yet again when you're in here, you're not coming with the bearer of good news. It's gotten worse again. It has. Uh, at senior level, anyway, it has. But um, I think, right, we've, we've dropped to Division 2 but I really do believe that this Offaly team is capable of a lot more, the seniors anyway. Uh, with the players that they have at their disposal, um, it wouldn't surprise me if they turned things around this summer and won the Joe McDonough. A uh, few injuries that are, like we, we're a small county, we're tight on numbers, Carlow are even tighter for just them. Um, but uh, like Oshin Kelly, it's a broken finger, uh, Killing Kylie is injured. Conor Mahan is just on his way back from injury. So there are three big names that we really need on the, on the field of play. And, uh, and they had a bad day at the office. They panicked a small bit in the second half, the very beginning of the second half. But they had a really good first, first half performance. So I don't really know what happened in the second half. Uh, against Carlo the week before, they, they really turned it on. Uh, so it's just, just a matter of uh, getting back to basics, rolling up the sleeves and getting stuck in. Uh, I, and again, it wouldn't surprise me if they won the Joe McDonald this year. Um, you're not the only person to say that. Actually, Tommy Byrne, he's the uh, Offaly GA chairman, he said that there's every chance things could be turned around ahead of their McDonough Cup campaign and appeals for clubs to drum up support for the team. So you're not the only person to say that. I know the two of you can often be sitting on very different sides of the hedge. Absolutely. However, um, can we put last Sunday's or last weekend's performance down as a bad day in the office? I don't know if we can. Like, there's more to it than that. There is. But are we being a bit dismissive of Carlo in doing that? I don't think so. Carlo have been... Have been they were a man down. And yeah, it, you know. yeah. Four, 14 men for most of the game. So if anything... Yeah, but how many times have we seen that in, in all competitions where uh, teams go defensive when, when they won possession, they made sure that they made... They were absolutely clinical in everything they did, uh, and they made maximum use of the of the possession. Uh, Offaly did panic a bit, um, and I really do believe that come the summer that that Offaly will turn it around. Now, we I think that we need to give Carlo credit where credit is due. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I, I was manager of Maynooth University at Fitzgibbon Cup level, and I had uh, Brian Tracy and Ayrton Gleeson from Nave Owen and Nave Breed uh, on the team, and like those guys. Abs- uh, true hurling men will fight on their back and uh, we have to congratulate Carlo on the m- it's a massive achievement for Carlo and I think the story has become far too much about Offaly uh, whereas we should be looking at, at, at uh, giving Carlo due congratulations for the, for the achievement. Oh well, absolutely, Offaly, uh, Carlo both in football and in hurling mm-hmm. um, have really achieved well beyond what anybody ever would have expected them when you see the resources, the playing opportunities they have, the, f- the field they have of players mm-hmm. so it's no taken away from Carlo but at the end of the day, what we heard was people within and outside Offaly saying that this was another nail in the coffin of a strongly traditional hurling county. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I can see where I see, can see where they're coming from when when they say that. But I mean, I really have my I well, I think I have my finger on the pulse in Offaly hurling, uh, and I know what's going on behind the scenes. I know these players. These are the same players that we that we saw at the very beginning of the league last year, uh, putting in tremendous performances against Dublin Kilkenny, and then the wheels came off the wagon. But uh, the players haven't changed. They're the same players who put in those those massive performances, and, and I really believe it. And you're right. Myself and Tommy Byrne are very uh, often at loggerheads. But in this case, I I would agree with them that things can be turned around. This group of players are capable, well capable of much more. I think there are a few players outside the camp who are not doing the, the county uh, justice by not by not turning in. Well, I mean, you can't force them to play if they don't no. want to. It is a voluntary organisation. Absolutely. Um, I do sometimes wonder, perhaps the reason that when players don't come out and play that people feel should be playing, it's because of the culture around it. Most people tend to enjoy playing sports. If they're choosing to not play sport, perhaps it's that a sign that it's not an environment they feel they would flourish in. Yeah, but there, there are 30-odd players who are happy with um, the setup there at the moment. I'm not saying that I would be in total agreement with everything that, that's happening within the Offaly Senior Camp at the moment, but, but the, in, the present incompetence is their job to, to train Offaly and pr- produce an Offaly team capable of competing on the field of play. Uh, 
they're getting a lot of things right, they're getting some things wrong, like everybody. Even the best of coaches and managers get some things wrong. Uh, and I think they will have learnt from uh, Sunday's performance. Uh, I, at least I hope they'll, they'll have learnt from it. Uh, and and most, most of all, it's the players who need to learn. Because no matter what a manager does on the sideline, if players start panicking uh, as a group on the field of play, I think that there's very little a manager can do. And I've been that soldier on the sideline watching things fall apart on, on the field of play and nothing you can do about it. Where is that panic coming from? Because when you're a man up, when you're well ahead at half time, there must be something that's causing that panic somewhere. And it can't just be about we're not playing good hurling. Do you think, are they feeding off the crowd, the lack of the crowd, the lack of support? Are they feeding off bad vibes? Am I reading far too much psychologically into this? I think so, Mara. Uh, I, um, I, th I think they had a really bad day at the office in the second half. And sometimes when things are going against you on the field of play, even as a player, sometimes it's, it's hard to get... When the team gets it on you, it's hard to turn it around. And we were a bit naive uh, in, in our tactics, even it, with the very strong breeze in the first half going for sharp puckouts. A uh, bit of naivety there, whereas if you watch Brian Tracy's puckouts in the second half, he was going long and getting it into the danger area. But can you blame the players for that if they're perhaps they're following... Orders. Which I don't, we, we don't know. We don't know that, we no. Don't know. But when you say like they're naive, maybe was it the sideline more naive than the actual players on the field and then that's when the heads began to drop. Again, this is conjecture. We yeah, we don't know. We don't know. No. So what do you think? So I, I think that the players on the field of play panicked and I think that the, that the management just weren't able to control it. Now, I, as you say, it's conjecture. It, it could have been, they could have been operating to instructions. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe not. We just don't know. Yeah, you never know actually what is going on. But one thing we do know is we did uh, try to get in touch with uh, Tommy Byrne and uh, he declined to take part in this interview. He did tell us though, he said, we can't quote it, you're just trying to make bad news for the sake of a headline. Is that news talk or me? Uh, I think it's, well, probably me. <laughs> okay. I think maybe less to do with you and more to do with me. I'm trying to make bad news for the sake of a headline, which is not true. Uh, you have been brought in to discuss uh, yeah. Offaly Hurley because obviously you have been pivotal. It's been how long since you stepped away after it, your, your report? Uh, t in July 2017. Okay, and what has changed since, if anything? Um, there's a lot of good stuff happening at, at grassroots level in Offaly. And I suppose this is, the, this is the story that never gets out. Mm. I mean, people see the, the senior team's performances and, and everything is reflected uh, from the senior team's performances. But, but at underage level in Offaly, there's a huge amount of really good work going on. Uh, like there's, uh, the clubs are starting to buy into the whole idea that, that of coach education. There's a lot of coaching courses being run. Um, uh, the, they've appointed uh, Dave Hare as the strength. Like, it, if you look at our plan, uh, one of the one of the key roles in our plan was a director of fitness. Now, they they haven't gone with a director of fitness, but what they've done is they've appointed Dave Dave Hare, who is a um, has a degree in, in strength and conditioning, uh, and was with Offaly footballers and Offaly hurlers, and they've appointed him as a GDA specifically uh, to, to roll out strength and conditioning education across the county. Dave was down with my own club, Cool Derry, uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he's coming back to us for another three sessions where he, he would, he's rolling out strength and conditioning education to all the coaches in Cool Derry. Yeah, I saw here um, there was the, an update on the Offaly Coaching and Games Committee been doing in quarter one, and we got a summary here of the documents. There is a lot going on, to be absolutely mm. fair. Like, Cool Derry has... For example, seven coaches in child safeguarding. There's player pathways. There's hurling football foundation courses. There's uh, there's hurling coaching courses. So, stuff is going on. But unfortunately, as we know all too well from even when you look at Dublin football, it takes generation for that stuff to come yeah. through. So, in the meantime, though, um, it's not painting a pretty picture. It's not. Uh, our plan, uh, the 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 off the hurling pathway plan, was a, a five year plan due to be renewed next year. Uh, it, that was, by and large, ready in late October, early November 2014. Uh, we didn't get to submit it to Offaly County Board until the beginning of April 2015, and it was, in, in, and it was a further 13 months before it actually uh, saw the light of day. Uh, and, and we had to make a presentation to Offaly County Board, and then things started happening. So we were, we were, we were a good 
18, 19 months behind. Since we stepped down, the games manager, uh, Tom Maloney, the uh, awfully coaching officer, Martin Cashin, and uh, the really good GDAs. So Dave Hare is one of the GDAs, strength and conditioning. We have uh, Liam Riley, Michael Cleary, and Connor Clancy. Uh, Connor Clancy and, and Michael Cleary are both awfully hurlers. And they have been rolling out uh, ed- education courses in Offaly. Like my own club, just to give you an example, just very quickly, like Coulter is a very small rural club. We have 40 players between 11 and, and 17 years of age. 4 0 for four teams. That's 10 players per team. We have 38 uh, uh, players at nursery level. I'm in charge of the nursery. I'm the club coaching officer now in Coolderry. We have 38 players there. We have 64 coaches. Uh, we have recently had 15 parents, all of them ex-hurlers and camogie players, who did the, the foundation course. So at the moment in Coolderry, with, with what, 70 odd players, all the way from 18 down to 3 years of age, we have 36 foundation uh, level uh, coaches, we have 24 uh, level 1 coaches and we have 4 award 2 uh, coaches. So that's pretty good for a small rural club. I know that Balnamir in, in North Offaly are Pat Cleary, Pat, you have Pat Cleary, Michael Dyling, Dahi Regan and Jim Troy involved with Balnamir. They are the same. Drum Cullen uh, are big rivals in, in Offaly are the same. Uh, Michael Verney in Burr tells me that Burr are starting to do the very same thing. We're, we're starting to get coaches into national schools in Offaly. In Coolderry now we have somebody going, we have two adult coaches going in every Wednesday to the national school in Coolderry along with four transition year students who've done the foundation course. So there's a lot of really good stuff uh, going on in Offaly and that's the story that never gets out. What percentage do you think of, you know that report you did put together, what mm. percentage do you think of that is now currently being implemented? Being honest, Maura, there's some parts of it that are not being implemented and uh, but I, I do know, and this is being genuinely honest, I do know that at least they're trying. They've made mistakes, some pretty big mistakes, but at least they're trying. And I, can, I was reading, before I came in here, I was reading the uh, uh, master plan for underage in Offaly this year. And they have acknowledged that last year and the year before, the underage fixtures ran way too late. Mm. And it scuppered. So one of the things that's vital in, in the development of games, and Kilkenny copped onto this years ago, was uh, second level colleges. So Cairns and Kilkenny CBS and Callan and all those ways. We have we, we've small numbers. So our big school is St. Brendan's in Burr, followed by Cloister Cullum in Tullamore, uh, Kilcormac Vocational School, Bannerhill Vocational School and Killina. They're the, the big five. Kilana and Kilcormick and Banhar are very small mm. colleges. Uh, but they were blown out of the, the park last year and the year before simply because the Offaly fixtures ran on until late October and, and mid-November last year. And even at 121 level, it went closer to Christmas. So, so it meant that, that our colleges were not able to prepare properly. Uh, it, it, and, but that's reflected in this year's... Uh, schedule of games. I suppose that what people will be interested to hear is, and they'll be delighted to hear that is going on, mm. but what they will be interested to hear is, what isn't being done? What do you think should be done that isn't being done right now? Okay. And again, I would love to have Tommy Byrne in here or somebody, but when they refuse to come on no, and speak okay. to us, that's okay. I can only be yeah. devil's advocate for so much. If you know no, I mean. understand. There's a lot of really good things to be done. What, what's not being done, now they've addressed that issue there, what I would like to see done, being done is uh, first year's in all of the, the, the uh, secondary schools. For instance, in Burr Community School, or St. Brendan's in Burr, which is the heartbeat of Offaly Hurling, always has been. Uh, there's about in around 60 players going into first year in Burr. Those 60 players, by and large, are not getting, getting very little hurling. Although this year, and I must congratulate Tommy Hannan and Brother, Brother Olton and, and the lads over the under-14 team, uh, they're doing superb work. They, uh, they've won Leinster in, the, in an all Ireland semi-final. Uh, so, but by and large, the first years in all of our secondary schools are not getting enough hurling. There was a proposal in our plan to have uh, an inter-county league at secondary school level where Burr would have two teams, Colossus Column would have two teams and the rest of them would have one team each and there'd be a, a league among themselves. Because even if 
even if some of those first years get onto the under-14 team, you have 60 players going in and only maybe eight or nine of them getting games. What did the rest of them do for eight months? So they go in in September, to come out in, in, in May or June, that eight months of two-thirds of the year and they're getting practically no hurling. And that's why we're losing a lot of players and that's why one of the things that was in our plan that isn't being addressed. I think one thing, though, that people might be worried about, and it used to actually also be said about Galway hurling, so it's not just an awfully thing, that people mm-hmm. would say the club game was so strong that the county became second mm-hmm. behind it. I'm not sure that's always true when people do say it, but one individual in particular who I was speaking to, um, he would be well known in, in hurling circles and awfully. He accused a good amount of players training at the start of the year with the county to get fit for the club, and he was saying it's endemic of the culture in awfully. What do you make of that? Uh, rubbish. Uh, being honest, I mean, I don't know where that's coming from. You think it's rubbish? Yeah. And also, there was something else that I felt that I don't know if I was an Offaly fan that I would be that happy to hear. Um, the chairman of Rahim J.A., John Hackett, saying Offaly's home support was embarrassing in the relegation playoff and stated he felt there's a disconnect with the fans. Now, I don't know, but I'd be thinking if I was a fan, I'm not sure how I'd take that. Yeah, but that's, that's a kind of a, a sore one, all right, Maura. Um, who we, I would love to see the clubs getting behind. We have to, that's something we really have to do something about. Like we earn the moniker the faithful county, but we're not living up to that name. But at the same time, he might be too far off. And the reason I say this, for example, last summer I was working up in Parnell Park when Offaly were playing Dublin. Mm. And it was a relegation battle as well that day that Offaly, if they lost, they were going to go down. And I could barely see any Offaly jerseys in the crowd. Yeah. To the point where afterwards I was hoping that I might be able to get some interviews with some Offaly supporters as they left. But by the time I managed to get out of the press box and got her, I couldn't find anyone in an Offaly jersey. Mm. So maybe John Hackett isn't that far wrong. Now, I hope I'm not annoying people now when I say this, but there's a disconnect somewhere. How do you fix it? Uh, the answer to that, more is uh, uh, you, you start at, at club level. That's, that's the only way I can see that we, that we will fix it. We start at club level and, and we, we make sure that, that the players attend. So he, like they've done it in Dublin, they did it in Kula, where each mentor of every team makes sure that his players uh, attend. And that's the only way we can, we can do that. Is the county board doing enough? I'd like to see them doing more. Uh, I'd like to see them fixing those things in relation to the to the work at, at primary school and post-primary school, especially the first years. Um, at development squad level, there's brilliant work being done at the moment. And mark my words, watch the tournaments in late August, the Arabon and Tony Forrestal and all of them, watch those tournaments. Guarantee you the Offaly teams this year will compete in those tournaments. And how are you so sure about that? Because I know what's going on okay. in, on the ground. Yeah, because the thing about Offaly is, I think whenever anybody talks about it, people are quite sad to see this demise because mm. it is a county that we all associate very good memories with, especially I think back in the 90s, for example. That's mm. one of my earliest hurling memories is Offaly. Yeah. Um, I don't want to go stirring the pot too much, but there are people questioning, you know, what is a traditional county? Is awfully traditional hurling county, and I know that caused a bit of a rumpus as well during the week. Is. What is what is traditional? Mm, I don't know, but look, we have to put out uh, teams at all age groups this year in Offaly, and I wouldn't measure success by silverware. I would measure the success by how we compete, and I give you an example. Well, if that was the case, you would say the last few weeks haven't been great for measuring success. Okay, I'll give you an example. In 2000, I think, I think 2003 or 2005 was the last time um, that Bourke Community School com- uh, contested a, a, a Leinster College's final, beaten by, beaten by five points. They were beaten by five points by Kieran's last year as well, last year. And the time before that was 1989, when St. Kieran's beat them by five points with DJ Carey and Adrian Rowan and all those boys on it. Never heard of them. <laughs> no. <laughs> but that same Offaly team went on to win the All-Ireland with Johnny Dooley, John Try, Brian Wheel and uh, Hubert Rigney, etc. So we don't have to win silverware, as Don Logue alluded to, to be successful. Like the, 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 When I came onto the Offaly panel in, in late 79, the guys who, who, who were there before me and who subsequently won All-Irelands, they had won nothing. Like Parik Horn and Damien Martin and uh, Joachim Kelly and like I remember Joachim Kelly playing on a on a on a All Ireland B College's final against St Charles and Tume and we're nine points up with five or six minutes to go and we're beaten afterwards. 
But of that team that were beaten in the R&B final, Pat Flory, uh, uh, Pat Flory, Pat Carroll, Joachim Kelly, all those lads made through and, and won All-Irelands afterwards. So I wouldn't measure success by the silverware on the table. What matters most of all is that our players, that, that we look after the, the development of the players and that we develop their technical, tactical and, and, and physical uh, skills and that, that when they get to senior, that they're able to compete. That's the important thing. And finally, uh, th again, thank you very much for taking the time to come out to speak to us. But finally, I suppose anyone listening interested in hurling, awfully or not, what they want to know is what do you think uh, this fall is there another fall imminent, or how much lower is Offaly Hurling going to go before this revival happens? Um, in the in and then the senior team we're talking so about. Now. Okay, senior team. I think I really do believe that the senior team will turn it around. Um, there's a, um, and I think that that they have a really good chance of winning the Joe McDonough Cup. Can we win the Joe McDonough Cup? I'm going to quote another famous Offaly man: "Yes, we can." <laughs> so, so I think. Watch this space. Okay, well, listen, Liam, thank you very much for your time. I really am grateful you came in. And just in case anybody's tuning in a bit late, we did get in touch with the Offaly County Board. We did try and get Tommy Byrne, the chairman, to come on and speak to us. He wasn't available, but he did tell us that we are just trying to make bad news for the sake of a headline. It is a shame he wasn't available, but, of course, that is a choice. I think at the end of the day, everyone just wants to see Offaly hurling and all hurling flourish in whichever way possible. Liam, good evening, Thank you. You can imagine on the back of that interview with Liam Hogan, we've got a fair amount of texts in. I'm joined here in studio with Shane, Vice Shane Stapleton. Shane, what did you make of that? Yeah, I mean, like, I've no doubt but that Liam Hogan has the best interests of Offaly hurling in his heart. I mean, he was part of the Hurling Review Implementation Committee that abandoned en masse in the summer of 2017. So there must have been frustration there. But is it getting to the stage now that Offaly hurling has fallen so far that... It needs to be the nuclear option at this stage because, you know, Tommy Byrne, you know, I mean, you can give me the quote when he was asked did he want to come on the show, he the said, county chairman. He said, are just trying to make bad news for the sake of a headline. Right, okay. And Liam was quite measured throughout that interview. It feels like he doesn't want to, you know, unduly rock the boat. And I get that. But when he was asked, are the county board getting it done, he said, um, what percent, I can't say, but they're trying. So I just kind of wonder... What was the whole point of that discussion there from, from Liam's point of view? Because are we trying, like, and again, I have no doubt, but he has the best interests of Offaly Hurling at heart. And he, he was up in Ballyboden as well, had success there as well. So I have no doubt, but he knows what he's talking about as well. But would Offaly continue into fall? And you look at Tommy Burns' two reigns as being chairman. Do you know, like there was the, the shock departures of the football bosses, Paul O'Kelly in 03, Jerry O'Fahey in 04. Look what happened with Stephen Wallace last summer, that debacle as well. It's debacle after debacle, and it's getting to the stage now that they have the fateful fields, um, they have that place uh, opened in Kilcormick, and pretty soon, if they keep going this way, they'll just have to decide is it going to be bailing or silage they're going to be doing out of that place. Because, I mean, they just have, like, obviously, I'm being just going over the top with that one, but they have well, an awful lot of work to do. If Liam was here now, he would say like, they're obviously, putting a lot of work in the grassroots, and it does take a generation. Of course, they are, but you know, like, this, this team is capable of more. I mean, there are players like the Shinron players earlier in the year decided to not go in with the county this year to focus on, on this and Michael Verney who does the Hurling show with us every, every Thursday I listed out 20, different, 20 or more different players that aren't in with the panel this year and uh, you know and that is the case I mean there are a huge amount of players that were involved that started last year that aren't this year and why is that? And maybe you could say the structures are wrong, you shouldn't have tiered competitions and now that they're down at the Joe McDonough, etc, etc. But if things were right at the top of the county board, much like the likes of Carlo, I'm sure that there'd be a bigger buy-in. And, you know, I mean, to, to not really come in and, and go, you know, if you're going to come in and awfully are at their worst, call it out and let's call it hard and see if we can get something happening because he was in with the review committee it obviously didn't really go anywhere that they wanted to they abandoned it so i mean is now the time to soft soap but would calling it out do any good i mean psychologically well, if, you're a, play it out isn't gonna do if you're a player on that team it's not going to be good for you i'm just thinking from a psychological aspect of people telling you you're not good or you're not playing well well or you're you not trying your best how do we know they're not trying their best okay. we're not there well i'll give you a quote that kevin martin had after they lost to uh, leash earlier in the year so he goes there's questions to be asked the players have to ask themselves questions about their commitment tonight and whether they give everything or not they'll have to digest it over the weekend and again i'm sure he loves awfully hurling but if he's able to call it out about the players why can't it be called out about the county board
Well, here are some texts that came in um, and some everyone's getting in touch as well on our social media platforms, Twitter and etc. Uh, you'd swear all was right in the world for a county that's fallen by the wayside. That came from Darren. Kev sent in a message. If the fundamentals are so sound and awfully, why are they where they are? With three question marks. And so I'll expect to see awfully winning all Ireland's to beat the band, will I? And that came from Colin and Tullamore. And Cormac O'Malley tweeting as well, saying it was a fascinating interview on the state. Now, I don't know what he means by fascinating, if mm. that's a sarcastic fascinating or a good fascinating. But he it seems carefully chosen anyway. It's, yeah. it's, it seems like there's a raised eyebrow with it. But I don't know. At this stage, I mean, I know that there was a lot of flack after the Sunday game as well, but like a, a few of the ex-players that were highly su successful went in as senior inter-county managers and, you know, with varying results. And I just wonder if, the, if that group of players, and I'm not calling any of them out by any shape or form, but if they tried to get together and coach the underage teams as well, and I know Liam is talking about the Arabon and, and the Tony Forreston and all that, but if they really got, got their teeth sunk into it as well, because if you had those players kind of coaching you, that really would, there would be huge buy-in there. So I wonder is there like blame in many different corners? And again, I'm not calling out anyone. I have called out the county board, obviously. But <laughs> just you the know, county board. Like just a bit more buy-in from all directions. But it is a pity that the county board don't engage, because actually I think it would be really interesting to hear if all that groundwork is going on, that Liam is convinced is going on and he'd know he's in a great position to know yeah. if that, why can't they come out and just tell us this I just think it'd be good to hear it'd be good for the people of Offaly to hear because there's not much to cheer about there at the moment but if you knew there was a light at the end of the tunnel if you knew perhaps we have actually reached the end mm. or at the bottom of the free fall but on the other hand like when people say players they're not giving us commitment they're not committed enough I always feel the need to point out like they are amateur players. They're not being paid to play. It's a choice to play. And if it doesn't suit you, or if it's not good for you, or for whatever reason, or if it doesn't suit you, you shouldn't feel obliged or pressurised to do it or be criticised for it. And you're probably training three nights a week collectively, doing gym a couple of nights a week. You're living like a monk. And then you go out and you lose to someone. And people say, sure, he's not fit. You know, I mean, and people, that's the way players are treated. And actually, it's, it's interesting. Um, you know, Liam, Liam is saying that things are turning around. He talked about the likes of Dave, Dave Hare being involved as a GDA, and, and I, I spoke with Dave before I did an article with him. He was involved with Longford, and I believe they were quite impressed with him. So I would hope that, that, that things are moving in the right direction in, in that sense. It was actually interesting if you, if you contrasted with what Kilkenny do. And, you know, Kilkenny, there's no tactics, all that, blah, 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 blah. But I think they're on the cutting edge in a lot of ways. And I saw a tweet that they put out a couple of days ago. It was uh, some hurling development squad news that they're... Um, it ran as follows. Kilkenny GA are hosting a running technique workshop focused on speed and acceleration this coming Saturday in St. Kieran's College, 9.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. We're inviting development squad slash club and school coaches to attend and observe and then assist our youth level players with these components of the modern game. And it just shows you that's where Kilkenny are going. That's, and you know, that, that's what gives you that cutting edge kind of player for the current game because you need speed and speed kills and if you don't have it, you end up like Offaly. Yeah, but... I could I don't, again, I use the phrase stirring the pot, but how, what is a traditional hurling county? In my mind, the only traditional hurling county in the country is Kilkenny. And you're going to argue with me saying, oh no, it's tipped as well. But I think the only county that's... I'm going to walk out if you don't change that. <laughs> <laughs> but as in, do you awfully have the right to be called a traditional hurling county? No, no, they had about 25, 30 years there. And other than that, they're their history was to not really be... Or could you uh, argue because they had a smaller population, because they were also playing football, actually, when they were on top, they were great for that reason? Oh, they were absolutely fantastic to do what they did while they did it, and maybe it was just a generation of great players that came along, but, I mean, you can't ignore the fact that for the 80 and more years before that, they didn't really do anything, and since the early 2000s, they haven't really done anything either, so their history is to not really pull up trees. If we're honest, and I mean, that's not to insult anyone, but that's just kind of the way it is. Well, uh, I'm not sure everyone would agree with you there, but listen, we've probably get a bit of abuse for that. You probably will, but you're between that and your hate of Claire. You probably get. A lot. I don't hate Claire. <laughs> I just think anyway, 2013 was a one-stop.